There's a fact of life that very few people realize. Whenever there is a man or woman eating creature just offshore, pretty girls in bikinis always run into the water. I have no idea why, but they always do, thus setting us up for great scenes. And we're, you were also pretty good about taking footage and, and using it more than once, like the universal footage of Rome, wasn't it, that, that, that yeah. appeared? And was that, would you sort of have that in the back of your head thinking we can always do that? Or I know that Joe Dante would sort of sometimes put an exploding helicopter into a movie that it maybe it wasn't originally in for the trailer, just to kind of... Joe was famous for whenever he had a dull trailer. Joe started as our uh, trailer editor and went on to become uh, an extremely successful director. But whenever he had a, a dull trailer, we had this great exploding helicopter shot, and he'd <laughs> stick that exploding <laughs> helicopter shot. In the, there's no law that says that everything in the trailer has to be in the picture. Yeah. So one of the best known of your early films was uh, The Little Shop of Horrors. Um, which you shot in two days and a night, uh, which is probably a record of some kind. In fact, I've never heard of anything shot that fast. Why did you move that fast? Why was, you know, what was it? Was it, it, was, it was almost a joke. There was a standing set at this studio. I was working out of a small rental studio in Hollywood. They built this fairly good set. And uh, I just thought that uh, I'd like to gamble and do something. And I'd found that, um, as I said, humor in a picture like Sharktopus. I'd done a picture with Vincent Price, which was a horror film. And at the sneak preview, I had Vince, sort of a standard thing, I had Vincent walking down the dark corridor at night and building up suspense with a shot on Vincent, a point of view and so forth, and cobwebs and music and, and lightning flashing and everything else. And the idea was to build up the suspense in the audience so they were saying, get out of there right away. This is really, really dangerous. At the same time, they're saying, go straight ahead because you must find out what is behind that door. And then when he opens the door, I had something fall into his face, and they were supposed to scream. It worked perfectly. They screamed exactly the way I wanted. And after they screamed, they laughed. And I thought, what did I do wrong? And I thought, I didn't do anything wrong. They laughed in appreciation of the scream. So I sort of put this together in my mind, and I thought, why not deliberately set up a comedy horror film? So with two days in the night, I tried the Little Shop of Horrors as an experiment, and the thing went way beyond my belief. I think John, Jonathan Demme uh, talked about that a little bit. He, he suggested uh, approvingly that the formula behind your films was a good degree of sex, some violence, a bit of nudity, and perhaps a subtle social statement. Um, if that's true, in the pie chart, how big is each of those slices? The nudity, the violence, the sex, and the social statement? You put all the first together, and it's maybe a third, and the other third is a social statement. On the other hand, I have to say, on some of the films, it's pretty hard to find a social statement. <laughs> Sharktopus does not have a major <laughs> social statement, other than that beware of a mutant shark. Has, uh, which is important. Uh, has that uh, pie chart changed at all over the years since, since 1962? No, it's, uh, it's pretty remained, it changes from picture to picture. Some right. pictures will be, to me, more significant. Other pictures will be uh, more purely an entertainment. For more of the New Yorker Festival, subscribe to the New Yorker channel.